in conversation with our disruptor for this week, Zuki Siotola, who is the founder and managing director of Siotula Holdings. Did I say that correctly? Siotula yes, Holdings. Did. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Such a pleasure to speak to you. You have a phenomenal uh, landscape as well as background, uh, given your corporate experience in South Africa in such a short space of time. And I want us to reflect on that, that at the age of 29, you were appointed as the CEO of Tebe Capital, young, black, capable female. Uh, you've certainly uh, set the bar quite high and been disruptive in the corporate space. I've had quite an amazing journey in corporate and I, I think that um, I can attribute that to having trained um, and worked at some of the best corporates um, like, um, like SAB and Barclays Africa. And I think that really teed me up for that opportunity to become, you know, uh, appointed at the age of 29 to be the CEO of Teba Capital. And I really enjoyed um, doing that role, had um, wonderful exposure and great impacts within the financial services sector and um, had the opportunity to really um, serve on many boards and work with some of the most um, interesting captains of the industry. Mm. How easy has it been though? Because as uh, alluded to, uh, it's an industry which is often dominated by older uh, males, so not many females as well, uh, being represented on a variety of boards or at an executive level. Mm. Has it been easy? Does the glass ceiling basically still exist? You know, the glass ceiling certainly does still exist. If you look at the numbers, um, you know, of um, female executives in financial services, they, they, they're quite limited. Um, and also if you look at uh, women on boards, they're also, you know, very much limited. Um, if you look at the JSE, I mean, I mean, I think there's less than five female CEOs, um, and this is looking across all sectors. Um, so it certainly has not been an easy journey. And I think that uh, mentorship and sponsorship has, has played a massive, massive role um, in my career and that's why I'm very passionate about mentoring and giving back um, and sharing my experiences and, and, and making sure that other women um, don't make the same mistakes that I did. Um, what were some and, of the mistakes you made? <laughs> I think, you know, earlier on in my career because I always by default was the youngest or the only black or the only female, um, you know, all of the isms would then follow me. Um, and I think I became very hard initially uh, at the beginning of my career, you know, um, being under 25, managing a large division, mm. um, having 50 year olds report, reporting into me. Um, when I started out, I think I, I, I became very hard and I was trying to find my feet. Um, but I quickly settled into my own skin um, and having a great knowing of who you are and your purpose um, and, and not being caught up in the title and the position but focusing on the work that you're there to do and making a difference um, and that really helped me and I found that people find that easy to follow and are, are very much inspired um, by that and are willing to work with you um, and over time you know your reputation speaks for itself um, and I don't have to you know announce myself now when I enter a room uh, people come to me uh, for you know um, specific expertise and they've worked with me of the, or I come recommended by other people um, and, and, and that has certainly made it easier over time, yeah. Goodness, well phenomenal lessons that were certainly learned but you took it a step even further uh, as a qualified chartered accountant, I mean the corporate landscape is just looking for talent like yours mm. but you've decided to go the entrepreneurial route. Yeah, yeah, um, you know I, I love business, I'm, I'm very passionate about business and uh, I love working with people and um, at this point in time I just had a you know an amazing opportunity um, to do something that's entrepreneurial um, so I decided to take some time off from corporate and I've been doing um, advisory work and sitting on boards and it's been very interesting um, and I, I interact a lot with business still um, you know a lot of the work that I do I'm still interacting largely with you know the banks um, and other corporates so I, I'm still very much present and um, I'm not going to shut the door on, on, on corporate um, it, it's I think the business landscape is very much interesting um, we have a, a huge shortage of, of talent um, and there are many opportunities to make a difference in corporate or um, as an entrepreneur yeah. you mentioned something so critical there Zuki shortage of talent because we know that in South Africa there's no shortage of individuals yeah. especially the uh, strong youth population that we have mm. however we almost seem to be facing several threats on different fronts, whether it be the fourth industrial revolution, which mm. you're quite vocal on as a young global leader at the World Economic Forum. Uh, it's the macroeconomic environment, which isn't creating a lot mm. of jobs. And of course, industries and sectors which propel innovation. Mm. How do we disrupt in those sectors with regard to our mindset and our mm. approach to making sure that there's a sustainable skills base mm. uh, to contribute to the economy going forward? 
I mean, it's a huge conversation that we're having at the World Economic Forum um, on a continuous basis, you know, really discussing the fourth industrial revolution and its impact. Um, I, I think a lot of people see it as a threat, but it's also an opportunity for mm -hmm. us to look at. I, I th you know, in Africa, we're a very young um, continent in terms of the population. I think we are about 60% youth um, somewhere there. So it's an opportunity for us to really relook at our education system and how do we um, redefine that so that we get, you know, we make sure that young people are job ready when they, when they come out of the system because our education system is still largely traditional in terms of getting matric, do four years in university um, and still come into um, the, you know, the workspace not being job ready. Um, so I like a lot of the innovation that's coming up um, in the education space. People are looking at universities differently. They're looking at online learning differently. Um, and I think that will start to get people ready. Um, you know, access to technology is vital as we move forward. Um, a lot of the disruption that's coming is very technology based and very digital. So it's important that um, you know, young people learn how to code at a very young age, for example, um, so that we become relevant um, you know, moving forward. Um, I've just come back from, from China and really looking at um, artificial intelligence and what it's doing. It is literally changing um, how production works. Um, in India, they now have 100% um, dark factories. Um, they now having robotics manufacture components. Sure. Um, so the world of work and how we see employment is going to change drastically. And it's important that we start gearing up um, across different sectors um, towards that. The definition of disruption, mm -hmm. what does it mean to you and where does it start? For me, it's, it's exciting, it's about innovation. Um, it forces you as an individual to look at yourself and say, um, how do I keep up with the trends? How do I ensure that um, not just my qualifications, but my skills and expertise are relevant um, and that I am continuously looking at the future and how to play in, the, in that space. Um, so I spend a lot of time at the moment um, really understanding AI, understanding um, blockchain, understanding what the fourth industrial revolution means, what it means for the traditional sectors. Um, mm. I think banking is going to change fundamentally uh, moving forward. I think mobile payments are going to revolutionize how we see um, access to banking to the unbanked across the continent and we have to start thinking about that and how we do business differently. Does that mean that you'll continue to disrupt uh, at your advisory firm regarding strategy going forward and how that um, might change the landscape going forward? Absolutely. I, I, I don't see myself being stagnant um, in the future in any shape or form. Um, I've always been innovative in my, in my thinking and, um, and I love creating solutions and working with um, other businesses. So I will continue to be relevant in the advisory space. Fantastic. Well, we're looking forward to all those developments and thank you so much for your time. Uh, clearly continue disrupting uh, the landscape that you're operating. Zuki Siotula, the founder of Siotula Holdings.